Guten Tag, and all those nice things. Hello to you, and thanks for coming to Draw With Me on the Draw Along Show. This is episode two of the week. Yesterday we had a show, and you can always watch that back on YouTube or Behance. Um, all of these shows are archived, so you know if there's something you really liked to draw with me, you can always go back and draw it again uh, and check that out. So anyway, hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all safe and sound in these very bizarre and weird times that we're living through. A little bit of sunshine on the horizon. I feel like we're heading towards a good moment maybe if we play our cards right people follow the rules wear those masks get vaccinated do the right thing guys um let's all help each other out anywho um you know it's spring here the weather's getting nice and everything i've told you about my neighbor before who's a gardener and uh yeah yeah, yeah yesterday he was just out there burying all his money in the dirt and i said uh what are you doing he said well i want to make the soil rich Now we should do some drawing. All right, grab yourselves a pencil, a pen, a marker, or a crayon, or maybe a nice TV antenna that you've ripped off of an old TV that you could uh, dip in some hot sauce um, and then draw all over the floor with, whatever you like, doesn't matter to me. These drawings are designed for everybody who draws with whatever they like, okay? They're simple, we keep them fun and easy, and uh, all ages are welcome here at the Draw Along. You can come and draw with me. Step, step by step, we'll get through it and we'll, we'll do something good. Um, let's say hi to some folks in the chat. Who's here today watching the show? Well, we have Judith. How you doing, Judith? And I see Mercurial is here. And Laura, hello. Sam and Stephen and Steve. Stephen and Steve are not the same person. What's up, Taylor? Hey, Taylor is my middle name. Check it out. Uh, Christine is here as well. Nice to see you, Megan. Jill Chirma. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out and doing some drawing. All right, let's keep that chat active. We're gonna be using it later because we're gonna do an animal and activity where you suggest for me an animal doing something weird, funny, crazy, unexpected, and that's gonna be fun. Now, to do these drawings, what do you have to be able to do? Oh, if you've watched the show before, you know you need to be able to do a straight line. Does it have to be perfectly straight? No, of course not, of course not. A zigzag and a curvilinear line. Could be a C curve, right? Shallow, whatever, you get the idea. If you can do those three kinds of lines, you are good to go, and I know you can. To start off the drawing today, we're gonna to do a long line, just like that. How long, you might ask, because I'm drawing in Photoshop on a screen, right? How long is that on your paper? Well, let's see. I'd say it's about an inch and a half, okay? Which translates to about four centimeters. So that should be about right. All right, so there's your first line, simple as can be. Draw another line about the same length heading down this way, okay? Maybe a little bit shorter. Doesn't matter, not really, doesn't really matter. Next, we're going to draw a diagonal line, all right? This line is not gonna be a very uh, wide diagonal, it's more of a steep diagonal. Not sure how to say that, steep, shallow, whatever. Just watch what I do and then copy. I'm gonna come down this away like so. Oh. I'm gonna interrupt it with another diagonal like that okay interesting i'm going to give myself a bit of space here and then i'm going to draw down at a slightly different angle so i'm getting a wider distance between this line at the base and this line here at the top okay so a little wider distance there all righty dighty next we are going to Continue this line, okay? Check it out. Imagine that it's passing behind this shape and it keeps on going and then it just rounds its way out like that. Okay? Okay, now, check this out. We are going to, here, draw an oval that fits inside 
of the lines at an angle. Check this out. Here it is. See that? That's what it should look like. So I've like tilted it at that kind of angle, right? You can see that's the angle we're drawing there. And then here, I'm going to do the same thing, only a little bit more circular, like that. So we go like that. Okay. Now, right here on the side, check this out. Draw another line like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we're gonna do another line like that. Okay. We're gonna bounce back over to this side and we are going to come down about two thirds of the way down this line, okay? And then just pop out, pop out this way about that far. And then we're gonna drop that straight down and see how we did this little curve down here? Check it out, we're gonna come down and right here, we're just gonna curve it out like that, okay? Let's do that again so you can see that a little slower. Aha! I'm sure by now we figured out what's going on, right? Time for some details. Are you ready? Watch this. I'm gonna do like kind of an S curvy kind of shape like that. Mm -hmm. And then branch it out that way. And maybe here we do another one like that. See what we're doing? We're adding some nice curvilinear elements with this way. Now I'm gonna come down here and around, watch. Down and around, okay? You can split that off this way and come up here like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna then come over here, leave myself a little space. Come down this way like that, almost straight down, right? But a little bit of a curve there. And then I'll break that up like this. You just make up whatever patterns and shapes you like. As long as they got a little bit of a wavy kind of action to them here and there, okay? That's gonna make it look more bark-like. Come over here, do the same thing this way. Maybe come down here and round it out like that. Doesn't matter, okay? The patterns you make, up to you, up to you. As long as around this area here, okay, around this tiny little branch that's growing out that way, you just round it out, move around that. Okay, in fact, I might even do this, like that. Have another one come up like this, and interrupt that. You get as complex as you like, doesn't matter. But what we've just drawn there is a really cool little tree stump but we're not done. First thing, right here, up and up. And then next to it, zigzag, line, line, zigzag. Got it? Same on this side. Just kind of alternate your zigzags and your lines. And that'll give you some grass. And right here at the top, we're gonna have some fun now, okay? We are going to, starting from this side here, this is the area we're gonna be drawing, okay? We're gonna come up at a little angle like this. How long is that line? It's the shortest one we've drawn yet, isn't it? Think about it. So don't draw it really big, okay? I'm just gonna pop over this way, even shorter. That's an even shorter line. And I'm gonna curve up and over and stop right here, okay? So I'm gonna come up and over and stop right here. So we're gonna go, woo like that and then same on this side see that I'm bumping out this way like this and then back in that way okay now from this way as we're going up and over we're gonna travel straight up and make a little bump like that travel straight up and make a little bump like that right and then See where that V is, that V shape? It's a zigzag, right? We are going to make that zigzag just under this line here. Not up here, not down there. See where we put it? And then we go straight down like this. So now it's a letter Y. And just to the right and left of the Y, so here and here, we go one and a two. 
Aha, someone's hanging out back there. Now from right here, this part of the stump, I'm gonna draw an S curve. It's gonna go up and over, okay? You can even curve that off a little bit more if you like. Up and over, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then just a zigzag back down that way. There is a squirrel peeking out from that tree trunk. One and two and three. See that? He sees you and you see him. Now, how do you want to customize this drawing? It's yours. You do what you want with it. You want to add some more details in there, some more plants, maybe some leaves on the ground, maybe some other animals. Uh, maybe you could color it in. Um, there's lots and lots you could do with this, right? It's your drawing and I want you to have fun with it. Uh, but that is our draw along portion of the show. Simple, you can always watch it back if you want to try again. Um, you can always slow it down if you need to. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that one. And, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of squirrels out in the yard, so I just had to do this one today. All right. Okay, squeak, squeaky. Yes, uh, clever. Lots of squeak. Yes, an acorn. Megan, an acorn would be a pretty nice thing to do. Um, indeed. Um, oh, hey, do you all hear that sound? I'm sure you've, if you've watched the show, you know that that is a, a sound that we sometimes hear. Um, and uh, it kind of caught me off, off guard, I have to say. Um, but it means it's time for Appreciation Station. And if you don't know what that is, well, check it out. Well, because it's funny that uh, you mentioned acorns. Today we're appreciating Taylor. We're appreciating Taylor today. Um, funny you mentioned acorns because, hey, Taylor, do you remember this? A long time ago in Normandy, we were out uh, collecting those magic acorns for that wizard, that old wizard up there. Um, and I had a splitting headache. And what you did was so cool. You took one of the magic acorns, you split it in half, you mix it together with some rosemary, if I remember this correctly, a little bit of mud, uh, and some lavender, some daisies. And um, I think that was it. You, you mix it into a kind of a paste, and you just smeared it all over my face. And at first I thought, boy, that's a nasty trick. And then my headache disappeared within seconds. So we went, we went back to the wizard and told him what you did. And even he didn't know about that technique for getting rid of headaches. So, I mean, I don't even know where you learned that. But I want to thank you for that. Congratulations on your knowledge of uh, forest medicine. And that was just a great memory I had hanging out with you. And you helping me out in a really cool way. So thank you, Taylor. We appreciate you. Um, anyway back to the show, we are now going to do a little bit of art vocab, okay? And today's art vocab is intaglio. Aha, what is that? Well, you know there are different kinds of printmaking, and um, intaglio printing, what's cool about it is instead of the ink sitting up on the surface of whatever you're doing, uh, where you're, you know, if you do some kind of relief printing, um, actually what you're doing is you're carving into something, the ink goes into where you've carved, and sits in there, and you wipe off, you wipe, wipe clean the surface of whatever that um, material is that you're going to be printing with, so that the ink is now cleared from the surface. But wherever there are grooves that you've carved, okay, wherever the indentations, that's where the ink is going to sit. And you put it through a printing press and use a lot of pressure. And when you print it, it's pushing so hard with the paper and that plate. That's what it's called that you've uh, gone ahead and carved into, that you're able to get that ink onto the paper. It makes it really nice. Um, image. So yeah, you can see the definition here. Any printmaking technique in which the image is produced by incising into the printing plate, the incised line or area holds the ink and creates the image. Voila. Um, etching, dry point, engraving, aqua tint. These are all examples of this. I got a good opportunity to do etching and aqua tint um, in college. It was so fun. And here I wanted to show you an amazing example of uh, etching or um, engraving actually by our good friend Albrecht Durer. Um, Look at all the values in this drawing. I mean, you see so many grays, but those grays are created by overlapping lines and hatching and cross hatching. Um, he's truly a master of that. And I thought it'd be fun to look at the full scale version of this and just kind of pan around and really appreciate how incredibly detailed this is. And I want you to observe on this pillow, look at the direction he's moving the lines. You see that? So it's not just a question of when you do cross hatching, I want you to remember this. You don't just draw random lines in di diagonal or straight across or up and down. 
sometimes you draw around the contours of the object. And in this case, look at the pillow. See how these lines are moving around the form of the pillow? Such masterful line work here. Look at that one. And then look at this skull just sitting here. Look at that cross hatching over here on the frontis. Um, and then over here on uh, the temporal lobe, you've got these, these nice curvilinear lines. And then back here, um, and the ocular cavity, look how he makes that really dark with more cross hatching and then moves across with more of a curvilinear path. Really, really amazing. Can you imagine how long it must have taken to, to do this image? I can't even, I can't even imagine. Um, I want you to look at this lion. That fur is, is crazy, you know. Just a lion and a dog, you know, typical things you'd have lying around the house as pets. Pretty normal. He always signed his name in such a, a unique way. Look at this, he's worked it into the art, the A and the D right there. Very cool. So check out Durer if you're not familiar with him, D-U-R-E-R. -E quite the artist, quite the drafts person, right? Okay. All right, well, now, here we go. Back to it, it's time for the animal and activity. This is where you will suggest for me, please, an animal doing something funny, something strange, something uh, unexpected. You wanna see what we did yesterday? Here we go, we had a boxing dove. I believe that was a suggestion from Steve. Um, and uh, today it's gonna to be something different. So I will look in the chat for your suggestions and uh, we'll see how we, how we go, okay? Let's bring back our little squirrel friend. He's gonna watch, okay? So squirrel, you just hang out over here while I grab my light blue color for the sketch of the animal and activity. So here we go, light blue. I'm ready to draw and I'm looking for your suggestions in the chat. Let's see what we have today. Oh my goodness, so many comments. Um, all these comments about the printing, that's awesome. Yeah, and congratulations to Taylor. Taylor, a guard lion. Yeah, that's the kind of thing we'd always have. That hat is beautiful on the wall, I agree. A caterpillar making cookies, a lobster playing a lute, <laughs> an ostrich doing hurdles. I like that. Um, Beaver is in a tree trying to get a kite down. A kite, oh, it lost his kite up the tree. Panda doing yoga, that's fun. A lion playing the Peruvian flute. A tiger driving a Corvette. Octopus playing a clarinet. Snake playing darts, holy cow. Look at all these comments. Um, Godzilla playing golf. Joe Chermio, that's it. I gotta do that, holy cow. I love it. Let's do it. Folks, remember, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, um, be sure to go to behance or be.net slash live. That's where I'm following the chat if you want to make a comment. Um, and uh, I can see what it is that you're suggesting because I, I can't see your suggestions anywhere else. Godzilla playing golf. Can we do it? All right. I can't even in my brain. I'm like, what does Godzilla look, look, look like? I'm, I'm trying to remember. All right. I know he's, he's, got, a, he's got a nose like that kind of. And he's got these like spiky things all over his back or whatever. Okay, we're gonna give him a golf shirt because that's funny. You still have the spikes pop popping out the back though. Okay, so let's get him a uh, little arms. He has short arms, doesn't he? Godzilla has pretty short arms compared to everything else. I think I think he does. There's that golf club. He's got really big legs, if I remember correctly. So I've got to draw like these big golf pants here at the bottom. <laughs> it's gonna look funny. Uh, okay, this is fun. Good suggestion. 
You know I like all your suggestions. They're all good. Um, I just, I've never drawn Godzilla before, so... I mean, like, I've actually never drawn him, period, in my life. So this is kind of a fun challenge. I'm, like, just going off my memory. Does he have, like, little ears or something? I can't remember. <laughs> Even if he doesn't, whatever, I'm gonna give him little, like, ear hole things there. Okay. And there we go. He's all teed up here. Okay. And I think that's a decent sketch, so we can now knock that back. And we'll jump on top of that with our darker color. Let's see if we can make this work. I know his eyes are kind of like round. I want to make sure that that's how he looks there. These spiky head things, I can't remember if they're like smaller at the top and then they get a lot bigger on the back. I think they're like more, aren't they more kind of like, like on the top of the head, they're sort of more like round kind of. And then as you go down the back, they get kind of more interesting, bigger shapes and whatnot. I don't know. Like I said, I've never drawn them. I'm just kind of in my mind picturing what he looks like. I have this incredible art book. Um, I have this Japanese artist who, of course, I can't remember his name. I'm trying to concentrate on drawing right now, so it's just not coming to me. But, um, oh my gosh. Did the most insane Godzilla posters. If anybody can throw that name in the chat. Um, he also did a couple of Star Wars posters that were so good. Um, maybe, I mean, just might be my favorites, actually. But his Godzilla artwork is just crazy. Like, I think he paints with um, oils, if I remember correctly. Not totally sure about that. Could be acrylics. Whatever it is, it's traditional stuff. It's painted uh, so well. Like, you, you look at it and you just go, good grief, I can't believe these the colors too. Like, just insane colors. Really vibrant, um, taking lots of liberties. He uses a lot of green in his paintings and really makes it work. Like that's one of the hardest, if you know anything about painting, that is one of the hardest colors to work with and, and get decent results. Green is just one of these colors that's famously tricky. It can be a real bear to, to work with um, with green. And, and he's just so good at it. It's insane. Check him out. Um, I know someone can find the name of this artist uh, in the chat. So I trust you all to figure that out. Little golf spikes. Okay, here come these big things. I don't remember the exact shape of them, but I know they're like notchy and and funny like this. Like little throwing stars sticking out of his back. Don't forget surface texture if you can add it, right? A little surface texture never hurt anybody. Get some surface texture on those arms. He's got those scaly bits, right? We don't wanna leave those out. So throw those on, on here so we can all get an idea of there being more than just these flat shapes that I've drawn, right? Doesn't have to be a lot, you know, just a few lines here and there. You can see they, they can really add quite a bit what you're drawing. Um, 
Okay, and off here in the distance, you can see what he's aiming for there. Pressure's on, Godzilla. The pressure is on. I'll hide the sketch for a minute, see how we're looking. Add a bit of a shadow under that arm, right? A bit of a shadow under the head, just so that stands out. Okay. Couple of little bits here just to kind of finish it out. And uh, I think that looks pretty decent. And there you go, gang. What a fun suggestion. That was a fun draw along. I had a good time with that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your suggestions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for just being here. Hope you had fun drawing. And uh, I'll be back again next week, of course, Wednesday and Thursday at same time. Tomorrow at five, uh, 4 p.m., excuse me, 4 p.m. Eastern is my illustration masterclass. We're going to talk about the perfect sketch, the importance of a sketch in your art. So tune in for that right here on behance.net slash live. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Everybody, please be kind. And I will say ciao for now. Take care. Bye-bye.